In addition to the differences in appearance, the other thing that we notice is that the imposter sister Lucia's teeth are normal and are not irregular. But when we look at the real sister Lucia's teeth, we can see that her teeth were large, projecting, and irregular. We also see from this photograph that the imposter sister Lucia seems to be wearing lipstick. This is something that we believe the real sister Lucia would never do. Another thing to notice is that the chin of the real sister Lucia is much shorter and the chin of the imposter sister Lucia is much longer. When the real sister Lucia smiles, her mouth forms a U. When the imposter sister Lucia smiles, her face forms an upside down U. Some might ask the question, why didn't sister Lucia's relatives notice the imposter sister Lucia? In a traditional Catholic Carmelite convent, when a sister meets with visitors, she meets them at the grate or the grill. The grill or the grate is an obstacle to seeing the person on the other side perfectly. When the sister goes to meet visitors, she will wear what's called a great veil. The grate or the grill also has shutters and a curtain. The curtain is put down so that the sister cannot see the visitors. They cannot make out the exact features of the religious sister at all. They can only see a silhouette and hear the voice of the sister. The only time that the curtain was removed was when the sister was meeting with her family. But an easy way that Sister Lucia's family members wouldn't notice the imposter was if the superior ordered that the curtain not be removed even for visits with her family. This is probably all that would be needed for her family not to notice the imposter, but even this might not have been needed. The superior of the Carmelite convent at that time was probably in on the conspiracy dealing with the imposter Sister Lucia. The family visits allowed for sisters at Carmelite convents were usually once a year. The usual time for the visit was one hour. We don't even know if during the late 1950s when we believe the imposter was implanted that Sister Lucia's relatives even saw her once a year. According to the particular rules of the convent Sister Lucia joined, even her close relatives were not allowed to see her close up. Also, the superior would be present with Sister Lucia when she met with a visitor. If a few years passed in which her family members didn't visit her, they might not have picked up on the imposter Sister Lucia. Most people remember what their close relatives look like by looking at photographs, and people remember what their close relatives sound like by talking to them on the phone. Sister Lucia's closest relatives did not speak to Sister Lucia on the telephone probably at all during that time, and photographs of Sister Lucia were probably not available and not kept by her closest family members. As many years pass without seeing your relatives and without being reminded of what they look like principally by photographs, most people would not even remember what their close relatives exactly look like. We only know of about 10 photos taken of Sister Lucia. These few photos were probably not even seen by her own family members. If you don't have any photographs of your relatives, how do you remember them? By your memories of what they look like. But in the case of Sister Lucia, there were almost no memories. Sister Lucia went into a boarding school in 1921, four years after the apparitions of Our Lady at Fatima. Then, in 1928, Sister Lucia entered the Dorothean Sisters in Tui, Spain. Then, in 1946, Sister Lucia entered the Carmelite Convent in Coimbra, Portugal. We have no idea how often her family ever got to see her at the convent, so her family members didn't really get to know their sister that well. So far, we have shown evidence as to why we believe an imposter Sister Lucia took over for the real Sister Lucia around the late 1950s. Therefore, the letters of the imposter Sister Lucia from the 1960s to the year 2000 would contain handwriting that would be at least slightly different from the real Sister Lucia. Here we can see letters from the real Sister Lucia, December 17, 1927, May 29, 1930, November 17, 1935. You can see that the lowercase g has a distinctive loop. And when we look at the imposter Sister Lucia's letter of April 13, 1980, we can see that her G is looped differently. Here we see the capital S, a letter from December 17, 1927. 
a letter of May 29, 1930, a letter of November 17, 1935. And here we see a letter from the imposter Sister Lucie of April 13, 1980, and a letter from July 13, 1989. The capital S in these letters of 1980 and 1989 by the imposter Sister Lucia are definitely different than the real Sister Lucia's capital S. In 1992, three individuals interviewed the imposter Sister Lucia. They asked her about John Paul II's 1984 consecration of the world to the Immaculate Heart of Mary and whether this fulfilled Our Lady's request for the Pope to consecrate Russia to her Immaculate Heart. They also asked her about the third secret of Fatima. All three individuals believed that this was the real Sister Lucia. This interview was later published in a book called Two Hours with Sister Lucia. Here is a portion of the interview. Question. And was this consecration accomplished by John Paul II on March 25th of 1984? Sister Lucia. Yes, 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 in a low affirmative voice which also seemed to show that she was expecting this question. Question. So this consecration was then accepted by Our Lady? Sister Lucia, yes. Question, Our Lady is content and has accepted it? Sister Lucia, yes. Question, Does God and Our Lady still want the Church to reveal the third secret? Sister Lucia, The third secret is not intended to be revealed. It was only intended for the Pope and the immediate Church hierarchy. Question, but didn't Our Lady say that it was to be revealed to the public by 1960 at the latest? Sister Lucia, Our Lady never said that. Our Lady said it was for the Pope. Question, can the Pope reveal the third secret? Sister Lucia, the Pope can reveal it if he chooses to, but I advise him not to. If he chooses to, I advise great prudence. He must be prudent. I had the opportunity to speak at length with one of the three individuals that was involved in this 1992 interview. He expressed to me that there seemed to be something very troubling and wrong with Sister Lucia. This 1992 interview by itself proves that there was an imposter Sister Lucia. As we have clearly shown at the beginning of this tape, the real Sister Lucia said that the third secret is to be revealed to the whole world by 1960. The imposter, Sister Lucia, contradicts this by stating that the third secret should not be revealed and that it was only intended for the Pope. She also contradicts the real Sister Lucia by stating that the third secret was not to be revealed by 1960. Some have attempted to discredit this 1992 interview by pointing out that Sister Lucia was always behind the grill, but in this interview she was supposedly out in the open. But this makes sense. The Vatican only allowed one selective interview to an individual group, with Sister Lucia out in the open and not behind the grill, in which she would tell them, and thus the world, that John Paul II successfully consecrated Russia so that it would be on the record with an independent group. But when Sister Lucia was to meet with her sister, who could have more easily identified that she was an imposter, she was always kept behind the grill and with many other nuns. The imposter Sister Lucie made her last public appearance on May 13, 2000. On this day, John Paul II directed Cardinal Sedano to make an announcement as to what the Vatican believed is the interpretation of the Third Secret. Sedano announced that the Third Secret was a vision, not words, and that it had to be interpreted in a symbolic key. Sedano announced that the Vatican's interpretation of the Third Secret was approved by John Paul II and Sister Lucia. Sedano announced that the interpretation of the Third Secret is the atheistic war on God's Church in the 20th century which culminated in the attempted assassination of John Paul II on May 13, 1981. The imposter Sister Lucia who was present did clearly confirm the interpretation of the phony Third Secret by making undeniable gestures of approval as Sedano made this announcement. Every traditionalist who doesn't accept the Vatican's version of the Third Secret of Fatima already believes that there was an imposter Sister Lucia, but simply hasn't figured it out yet or isn't honest enough to admit it. You can't have it both ways. You can't reject the Vatican's phony version of the Third Secret unless you also reject this quote Sister Lucia as an imposter. Sedano announced that John Paul II ordered the Congregation for the Doctrine of Faith, 
headed up by none other than Joseph Ratzinger, now Benedict XVI, to make public the vision of the Third Secret with an appropriate commentary. 